I'm Muslim, you're Jewish. We're dispelling that myth right off the bat right there. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a it's a total farce that <sighs> I gotta be careful the way I say this to they're going to try to ethnically cleanse Gaza. <laughs> yep. I mean, that that's and I'm, I don't use that term lightly. OK, of that now they're just foaming at the mouth, demanding in their words, ethnic cleansing. They're talking about basically removing 2.5 million people mm -hmm. from there. OK, and honestly, they have a mandate to go seek justice and revenge. They do. And they would feed me. They would insist that I that I take from them. It is just like the most unbelievable, impactful experiences for me. Patrick, what did your pilot guy say? I want only Jews in Israel, right? Okay, that that is a form of ethnically cleansing. Be yeah, sorry, you know it's it's emotional for me, and just tell him, uh, you know, how much I support him and I'm thinking of him and. Assalamu alaikum. Greetings of peace. Welcome to the Deed Show. I'm Eddie, your host. Go ahead and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss exciting episodes just like the next one. We have some very, very sad and traumatic and words cannot express the heartbreak that is happening and the world in front of us. It's unfolding. So to help shed some light on what's going on, my next guest Dan Cohen will bring us up to speed, shed some light because there's a lot of confusion. And for the average person who wants to get to the bottom of things, they're, they know that there's much fake news out there. They know what the fake with the mainstream media is all about. Hopefully our next guest, God willing, Dan Cohen, who is a Jewish journalist and filmmaker in his own words. I'm a Jewish guy who had my bar mitzvah in Jerusalem and went on birthright. He says he's lived in Palestine for three years, including seven months. Get this, seven months he lived in Gaza. He's been looking to debate some of the main heads who are pushing much of this atrocity propaganda, such as Ben Shapiro and the like. And it's very unfortunate to see many, many people, even good-hearted people who are falling for it. So I challenge you, I challenge you to sit through this interview if you're a sincere truth seeker. Let's bring out my next guest, Dan Cohen. This is the Dean Show. Girl, love you very much. I love all the work that you're doing. When I was ready to talk about it, I would only talk to you. And I was explaining how much respect I have for the faith of Islam. Welcome to the Dean Show. The Dean Show. Hello, Dan. How are you? Hey, Eddie. I'm great. Thanks very much for having me. I appreciate it. And an, an important moment. Yes, very, very. It's very heart, heart uh, breaking, you know, to see all the latest developments on what's going on. Uh, just touch upon real quickly when I when I introduced um, this is from a from a tweet of yours, actually, that you you put out that caught my attention and many's. Uh, can you get into it? You stress this. I'm a Jewish guy who had a bar mitzvah, lived in Jerusalem, but you went to the others. You lived in Gaza, you know, tell us, share this experience uh, with with the audience and myself. Yeah. So um, my first stint in journalism in 2014, in early 2014, I went to Palestine after, you know, trying to figure out what to do with my life. And uh, I and I um, was there from 2014 to 2017, living uh, in Jerusalem, in Ramallah, um, in Bethlehem. And I ended up getting access to Gaza. Uh, I managed to get press credentials through the Israeli government. And the first time I went to Gaza was in, I want to say, July of 2014, at the, the last 10 days of the Israeli offensive on Gaza um, in, in, in the summer of 2014. And I continued to go back as much as I could over the next few years, while also covering what's going on in Israeli society, the West Bank, inside you know, 48 Palestine. Um, and I made, a throughout that time, that seven months in Gaza, you know, filming the destruction, the mass destruction of Gaza itself, watching 13, 14 story towers be destroyed by us made bunker buster missiles, you know, paid for, with our tax dollars, um, watching entire neighborhoods be flattened and, and watching peaceful demonstrations on the border. Uh, or rather uh, along the fence, watching Israeli snipers shoot people one after the other. I turned this into a documentary. 
um, called Killing Gaza, which, um, you know, everyone can watch on at killinggaza.com. It's you can buy it for five bucks or you, it's on YouTube for free. If you don't have if you don't want to pay five bucks, don't worry about it. It's on it's on YouTube. So all of those experiences from 2014 to 2017, living in Palestine as a reporter, you know, not tied to the mainstream media, um, I w- were just just made everything totally clear for me. I had the ex- I have the experience and understanding of what Zionism is. This is not a you know it's not a, not a conflict between two equal peoples. This is the colonization. This is a racist supremacist ideology that is not real Judaism by any stretch, but weaponizes Judaism, uses Judaism as a human shield to advance imperialism. And that's that's what my journalism on Palestine aims to show and uh, and also on Israeli society. So that- usually I'll, I'll show some of the uh, previous interviews I'd have with um, Orthodox rabbis, um, uh, Israeli, Jewish people to dispel some of the myths, because a lot of times um, they'll say, OK, this is a Jewish Muslim thing. You know what I mean? Muslims hate Jews, but I'm Muslim. You're Jewish. We're dispelling that myth right off the bat right there. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a it's a total farce. That's actually what Zionism wants is for us to think this is some kind of religious conflict, because then it's it's just it's zero sum. It's, you Mm. you know, I have my beliefs, you have your beliefs and they're incompatible, incompatible. So whoever wins by force wins. But that's not what this is. Um, Judy Zionism is a pseudo messianic project built on the tracks of ancient Jewish messianism from the times of the temple. And what happened with the destruction of the temple is it was a catastrophe for Jews back then. And so the whole cult of, um, of that, that Jews did in those days of animal sacrifice and to worship um, in the temple was ended. And the rabbis, instead of priests, the Kohanim, which is my name, uh, the, they were no longer in charge. You had rabbis teachers who were in charge with um, preserving Judaism. And so it became a culture of study um, of the Torah, of course, of scripture. But the whole idea of having a Jewish kingdom was relegated. It was sort of a genie put back into a bottle um, where because it had caused such catastrophe. And so over the, the centuries, um, this idea of Jewish messianism would kind of appear from time to time and t- uh, when there was social, political, economic upheaval. But Zionism thought, well, we're European nationalists and, and you know, there's anti-Semitism here. And so the best way for us to survive is actually to, to join them, to be uh, supremacists and say we are a separate Jewish nation, which is a complete fiction. There's all kinds of different Jewish people from all, all different countries because the religion spread over the, the millennium. So Zionism took the mythology or the religion of Judaism, whatever you want to call it, and took those symbols as any European nationalism needed and said, we are going to pr- take the precepts, which is a Jewish Jewish sovereignty, Jewish um, uh, army, the, re- the return of Jewish people, the so-called return of Jewish people, uh, even though, you know, of course, I'm not indigenous to Palestine and nor is Benjamin Netanyahu. And they created this mythology. They use this mythology to nation build. The problem is, well, it's problematic in itself, but it has uh, the logic continues to say, well, you can't have a, a democratic state. This is a religious state. This is a theocracy that uh, the logic of Zionism, Zion refers to Mount Zion, where, of course, al is today and where Jewish tradition teaches the temples once stood. So what happened over the years is a tiny element of Zionism that um, early on was very uh, small and marginal. Through 1967 war, it was kind of, it, it got a, a big uh, boost. And this idea that this was God's plan coming into fruition, this was a Jewish state, a Jewish kingdom, a messianic era uh, happening, that small, tiny movement grew and grew and grew, and they hated the peace accords. So the idea of Oslo, um, of the um, Camp David Accords, 
of the Gaza withdrawal, all of these things radicalized them because the idea was God is giving us this land, it's expanding, and the state of Israel is holy, it's God's vessel. But if when those peace accords happened, they said that was a crisis for them, an ideological, th theological crisis. And so it became that we have to actually force God's hand. So what we need to do is um, not just build settlements, but go to the heart of the entire thing, the Al-Aqsa compound. We have to, they, so they want to destroy, they want to take sovereignty over the Al-Aqsa compound. Of course, one of the most important um, Islamic holy sites in the world. Um, and so, of course, the most important in Palestine, not only religiously, but culturally. And um, they are going, to, and, and the idea is we will take that over, destroy it, expel any um, uh, Islamic presence and build a temple and return to this biblical, ancient, kind of outdated idea that doesn't they don't even know what it actually was because it was an oral tradition passed on through various languages um and create that so it's recreating it's like it's like this very similar to isis you know where it was a bunch of people who don't actually know the religion who are um who are using it to advance something completely different so that's what zionism is and that's what we're seeing um even play out today Wow, so it would be almost equivalent to like you have this Daesh, you know, ISIS, uh, we say the insane state, what they're doing. Exactly. And I mean, and, and, and it's, it's funny, well, funny, it's ironic, I guess, because not only are ISIS and Zionism the most kind of extreme and now uh, virulent form of Zionism ideological twins, but they actually collaborate. It was ISIS, uh, Israel was supporting ISIS in Syria to overthrow the uh, Assad government. Uh, Israel and the United States directly, directly supported ISIS. Can th this can be confirmed? People can look this up? Absolutely. 100% yeah. you can look this up. Uh, the United States was often called Isra uh, ISIS's air force in Syria. Um, the the so-called Free Syrian Army was a CIA project that was basically just a way to launder weapons to ISIS. And so, of course, we know what ISIS did, exterminate minorities in Syria, and it was supported by Israel, too. So, you know, these are these are all like whether it's, you know, Nazis in Ukraine that we've been supporting or ISIS in Syria and Iraq that have devastated those countries and elsewhere and Zionism. These are all tools of Western imperialism. And so we have to understand that these are all basically forms of, of the same thing. And Zionism has really nothing to do with uh, any sort of, you know, decent form of Judaism. It is a perversion. Uh, tell me, you've had so many aid workers, uh, journalists coming out, um, speaking about the um, war crimes now that are unfolding, the law, the international laws that are being broken right now. And what was what what was your experience? You know, you had to have known much of this in the beginning. Uh, you probably had this. Uh, this fear to go over to the to the other side now that that was um, uh, being painted as animals, barbarians. And what was your experience like? Did you have fear your first time when you went over to Gaza uh, that, that you and, and then when you finally went over, what was your experience like? Because you were with the you were with the indigenous people there. You were living, sleeping, eating like, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, I, I, all that time I was. Um, you know, staying with, with friends. Sometimes I was in one of the hotels for foreigners, but the vast majority yeah. of the time I was staying with friends, you know, breaking bread with them, sleeping in their, in their house. And, um, I, you yeah. would think like, hold on, you're a Jewish guy. They're going to, they're going to chop your head off. What's yeah. going on? Yeah. That's what the propaganda would like you to believe, you know, that, that, that exactly that it's this religious conflict. And, you know, I mean, you'll, of course you'll hear, uh, Palestinians say, you know, they'll, they'll use Yahud for, you know, to talk about Israelis, but that's, they're talking about their occupiers. They're, they're not talking about Jews. They're talking mm -hmm. about their occupiers, of course. Um, yeah. My experience in Gaza was overwhelmingly positive. It's a place that holds just, you know, I hold in my heart and, and it just pains me so much to see the ethnic cleansing that's happening right now that, that we're watching on the internet from afar. Um, I mean, my, my time there, I, I was always treated with incredible warmth, 
the Palestinians, I mean, especially of Gaza, are really salt of the earth people. Um, and they have suffered such so such incredible amounts uh, over the years and years and years. You know, they're mostly they're almost all refugees from what became Israel. You know, they're the they're the the grand the grandchildren. They're the, they're the sons and daughters and grandchildren of people who were ethnically cleansed in 1947, 1948 in the Nakba, which you know I don't need to tell your audience. Um, so my time there, I mean, if I was ever scared, it was because of Israeli bombing. Or when I went to demonstrations uh, near the fence, if you come within 300 meters of the fence, the completely militarized wall fence system, you will get shot by an Israeli sniper or by remote controlled machine gun nests that sit on top of these concrete walls that are operated by an all women's unit uh, miles and miles away. And they target people by their gate. I've seen them open fire on people. So for me, you know, there was no fear of are Palestinians going to do something to me. I mean, I'm not openly advertising that I'm Jewish there, um, mm -hmm. but I'm, I was just a foreigner. And there were other foreigners. There were other journalists that would come and go. I'm, I'm an American guy. Um, so I'm an American journalist. And so people appreciated that I was there, particularly after 2000, you know, the summer of 2014, when no one else, none of the other journalists were spending much time there. You know, they were going to other places. And I decided... No, I'm going to continue to spend as much time to document the what people are surviving through in the rubble, in the cold winter when babies are freezing to death or in the hot wow. summer when um, people who had their entire neighborhood bombed by Israel are living in shipping containers in the sweltering heat uh, without any sort of hope. But I would go there and you know I'd go to a shipping container and talk to people and they would feed me. They would insist that I that I take <laughs> from them. It was just like the most unbelievable impactful experiences for me so um that's you know those are the experiences that have given me clarity that what i say on twitter any i'll debate anybody i don't care who you are if you want to debate israel zionism there's you don't have a chance um because you know i know what reality is and and all of these other these other yeah. frauds you know on on youtube or whatever they sit you know they, they don't they don't know anything about life they don't know anything about reality they're just well-paid liars they're trying to uh, dehumanize the people this is i want this to stick in your mind you know some of the most affluent people you know uh will not offer you some of their own food they got all the money but these are people you're saying in a shipping container just had their houses blown up and they're in a shipping container and they're insisting that you that you eat from the little that they have i mean just just think about that um let's get into and a lot of probably my questions um will be answered through some of these clips we'll play. Um, someone who I got to meet, uh, Patrick Ben David, he had some guests on just recently, Charlie Kirk. I heard you mention him. I don't know him personally, uh, but um, uh, we've opened up a line of communication, and I hope that he's an American Christian conservative. I'm hoping that um, his heart can soften and other people's hearts, the, the good Americans out there. I'm an American. Uh, you're an American also, is correct? Mm -hmm. um, so we're Americans who want good for our country, good for other people also. And uh, it's sad that any time human life is precious life, uh, these, you know, humans are not animals, uh, especially babies. Uh, so I'm going to show you this clip this is from a PB PBD podcast, and I'm going to I'm going to hope that uh, Patrick uh, sees this and he invites he keeps it fair and balanced and he invites someone like you on the program to have a fair and balanced discussion on the topic. So let's go ahead and. Take it to Charlie Kirk, see what he has to say. We'll show a few of these clips and get your, your uh, response to that. When I took a helicopter ride from Jerusalem to the Gaza border, it's 45 minutes. Wow. Six hours. They're live streaming the killing of Jews. Was, did somebody in the government say, stand down? That is a legitimate, non-conspiracy question. The whole country is the IDF. <laughs> Yeah. The whole country is. Yeah. And you're trying to tell me that they're going to concerts and kibbutzes and schools and by reports, six hours. Let's say it's three hours. That's suspect. Uh, Go ahead, Rob. It's also not like a right wing 
uh, reporting. This is from the New York Times. The long Thank wait you. for help as massacre unfolds in N- Israel. Nine I can't hours. think of a more liberal yeah. news outlet than the New York yeah. Times. And, and, and by the way, I, I'm actually very pro-Israel. So let me be very, I mean, mm-hmm. so I'm not exactly. Well, I think I'm, we all are. No, no, I just want to make sure my position is clear here. So they start off here with this. There's something about suspect. Like, is it possible that this thing is set up? Because who benefits from all this? The Palestinian people at the end, now 50% who are children are being just annihilated. What do you think from the conversation that's starting off there? They start off with, um, this is suspect. Well, I mean, you know, I think the, what actually happened here, what led to this operation from, from Gaza um, is just the simple, people are looking for something conspiratorial. I don't see that. What I see, I mean, I guess it's possible, but what I see is that um, the Israeli government, led by the the by, by Benjamin Netanyahu, basically ignored warnings. They you can, it's I mean the simple fact is you cannot keep a population under siege indefinitely, um, especially one that has weapons, and expect that they're not going to try to take their freedom to fight back. Um, you can you know question what happened in those settlements, and you know if there were civilians killed then, you know, that's certainly awful. And, you know, that that's all up for debate. But what's not up for debate is Palestinians right to resist. Um, So if you, you know, when you keep people in a cage in a ghetto, you bomb them, you starve them, you keep them under siege. And then you take some kind of you put the softest targets, these settlements right on the other side of this hyper militarized fence and wall system. And you know that people can get out, that, that militants can get out. You put these soft targets, these kibbutzes, these Israeli settlements, and you have some kind of concert filled with young people who are all of military age. Many of them are soldiers. In fact, there were military vehicles there uh, that's, that you can see in accounts from, from uh, Israelis who uh, survived and escaped that. You are basically asking for some kind of attack, for some kind of operation. And so, you know, to feign outrage, well, the outrage should be directed at Israel, at the Israeli government for keeping these people in a cage, treating them like animals. Because what happens with anyone, when you treat them like an animal, eventually they're going to act out in some way that you don't like. And so that's, you know, that's happened again and again and again. And this is just maybe the most, you know, this is the most severe example of it in years and years. So, you know, Charlie Kirk and these guys, they're simply unable to understand that. They're looking for some for some conspiratorial angle um, because they can't understand why why that would happen and why, you know, Netanyahu, they're drunk on power. I mean, they're all about expanding settlements in the West Bank. They thought Gaza is a done deal. Um, and Hamas played its hand very strategically. It ignored, um, you know, stepping into the confrontations before in order to sort of play coy. Um, and it, and Israel also, we know that it w- warned, uh, it ignored warnings directly from the Egyptian government that something was imminent from Gaza. So, I mean, there's the actual intelligence that the Netanyahu government ignored, and there's just the overwhelming, overwhelmingly obvious logic that you keep people in a cage, they're going to try to get out, and it, it's going to be ugly. So, um, you know, these guys are just too... Um, they're incapable or they're, or they're dishonest and they won't, they won't entertain that at the elephant in the room. Let's go to the next clip here. The Israeli hard right government has a mandate. I gotta be careful the way I say this to, they're going to try to ethnically cleanse Gaza. (laughs) I mean that that's, and I don't use that term lightly. Okay. They're talking about basically removing 2.5 million people Mm -hmm. from there. Okay. And honestly, they have a mandate to go seek justice and revenge. They do. There is this idea that they need to have a truce or a peace treaty. That's morally crap after you see women and children be burned alive and dragged to the streets. But they have a right to seek justice, revenge, at what cost? Even if you go with an eye for an eye, uh, does that mean an eye for two million innocent people? What what do you what do you say to? um, to this um, response or statements by Charlie. Well, it's even worse. Charlie Kirk didn't say they have a right. He said they have a mandate that they have mandate. to. Mandate. And so what he, you know, if Charlie Kirk were, were 
uh, a pundit in during during World War II, during the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising, he would be cheering on the Nazis to go in and exterminate every single inhabitant of of the ghetto. That's what he sounds like. This is not about protecting Israel or Israeli, uh, you know, c- civilians or anything like that. He's talking about ethnically cleansing. In his words, a ghettoized, de- demonized people, most of whom, mo- you know, much of the population, more than half, well, more than half of the population of Gaza are children. I mean, you go anywhere in Gaza, there are children everywhere. That's what he wants to do. He, I mean, this is just genocidal rhetoric, and it, and it's open. He doesn't even try to hide it between discourse about security and protecting and any of that. Now it's just out in the open. These guys are are just straight up fascists. It's it's just wild to see, and especially I don't know about Charlie Kirk, but a lot of these kind of populist right wing guys were against the Ukraine war. You know, they had this kind of phony anti war um, rhetoric. And they've just dispelled with all of that. Now they're just foaming at the mouth, demanding, in their words, ethnic cleansing. It's just the most depraved display uh, I've, I've really ever seen on, on, on television, these kinds of things. I mean, you know, as um, I mean, we as Muslims, we love Jesus, you know, and then you often hear um, Christians who I feel sad have jumped into this whole Zionist thing now. Other Christians who are in Palestine who are also being oppressed, uh, correct me if I'm ever wrong here, and and now you, you're going away from what Jesus or the prophets of God or any God-conscious person is about spreading peace, justice, prince of peace, you know, which we believe he is. But what we're at what co- now it's like all that's out the window. What where's your moral compass, your moral code? It's like now, you know, these are children we're talking about. Am I correct? Fifty percent of Gaza is children? More. More than fifty percent. More more than fifty percent. Exactly. These are not little animals. I mean, these are children. And even even now, if you were if you were talking about there are probably more people, ironically, who would be sta- these are dogs out there. And they had two million dogs. You'd probably have more people, you know, who would be coming out to save the dogs. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 just I don't even have words for how horrible that is. You know, one here's another thing about Charlie Kirk. He's not only a he's not only advocating openly ethnic cleansing. He's also and I mean he's saying, you know, getting all the expelling all those people. He's also a liar. He tweeted i'm going to read you exactly his tweet uh, but this is about the 40 beheaded babies deception that went around he said they found the bodies of 40 jewish babies some with their heads cut off pray for israel in the next tweet shortly after he says oh this might be misinformation so we have to be careful it was soon debunked the whole thing about 40 hamas De- debunked people. debunked this is like okay totally fake there's no evidence of it. The Israeli prime minister's office, two days after the, the incident, tweeted out a photo that apparently was made with uh, artificial intelligence, an AI photo. There is not a single parent who, or family member who has come forward to say, one of my, you know, I'm the parent of one of these supposedly beheaded babies. There's not one um, name released. There's not a photo. There's, we don't, you know, from before they were supposedly killed, anything like that. Oh yeah, not only that, we have yeah, the source is a is a fanatical Israeli settler who who wants to commit genocide um openly. This is this is the actual source. Yes, this is the source who went to the Israeli news outlet I24 and uh which is controlled by Benjamin Netanyahu and um and said wow. I I want to do that. So this has been I mean, this is what this is is an intentional deception. And Charlie Kirk actually admitted it. This might be misinformation. And then it was debunked. And then he goes on and still promotes it the next People day. Are, he's still that, promoting that, where, it. I mean, where's the integrity, the honesty, truthfulness? All this is out the window now. You hear this also be constantly being repeated by um, Ben Shapiro and the like. God, and he's, he's, he's looking to draw the emotion, the reaction from the American public uh, saying, would you do this? Go into civilian villages, he's quoted, and kill babies. Uh, burning families, raping women, raping women. Would you kill a baby? This is Ben Shapiro asking these que- questions. 
But then now people like you and others are uncovering that this is all. There is a there's also another American here. His name is Jackson Hinkle. Yeah. Yeah. Jackson Hinkle and others are coming out. These are Americans and others who are who are to these claims now. This atrocity propaganda that's being pushed, they're coming out. They graped women. This is an unsubstantiated claim that the L.A. Times actually retracted uh, this girl. She's still alive in Germany. She can come out if she was raped. She can testify, right? Well, she's in she's in Gaza. She's held captive in Gaza. I mean, okay. she was uh, the, the last report I had. Basically, they said that they killed her and they raped her, which was um, not true. Her mother came out and said that she's actually um, on in on critical support in the hospital in Gaza and mm -hmm. is being treated. So, I mean, all of those, what you just showed, that list that Jackson Hinkle came up with are just one lie after the other after the other. And the biggest one is the 40 beheaded babies. Now, I mean, I look at what happened in those settlements in those kibbutzes and all of that stuff. And I think, well, that's horrible. That is awful. What actually happened? There's no doubt about it. Why does the Israeli government feel the need to lie about it? Why does Charlie Kirk, why do all these propagandists feel the need to lie, to exaggerate? Well, it's because they want to generate bloodlust in their foreign audience to justify the ethnic cleansing that he's calling for, that he's demanding, and that the Israeli government is actually carrying out at this very moment as we speak. Now, a normal person, I would think, would find out, oh, 40 he 40 babies weren't beheaded oh that's I'm, I'm relieved i'm glad but instead no he wants they want 40 israeli babies to have been beheaded because then it would justify they want to sacrifice these babies so it can justify the murder the mass murder and ethnic cleansing of of palestine that's how <laughs> demented these people are uh, this is i just i don't uh, for educational purposes i want to show you something I don't, I don't know if you're aware of this but just so you can see you know this is the the stance of of muslims here following the instructions of Prophet muhammad peace and blessing be upon him. we have no anyone who goes against this i mean this is what we condemn uh can you see this that's up on the uh mm -hmm. on the on the screen uh the killing of innocent uh children uh women you know mutilating bodies cutting down of um trees you know attacking uh, churches monasteries uh synagogues whatever the case uh, religious sites uh destroying you know uh the villages town this is something that is clear so i just want to make this clear this position that you know and anybody who does so outside of that they're going outside of uh, what is um um sanctioned so let's get into the next clip here and get your reaction to this quickly on that because th that is a very slippery slope and if you actually want to talk about what jews and even christians uh should be most fearful of muslims as well is the concept of ethnic okay cleansing. So I, I just want to be very sorry, yeah. sorry to interrupt sure i'm saying that's what they're going to be accused of correct but if there are some people in public life in israel mm -hmm. that patrick what did your pilot guy say i want only jews in israel right Okay, that, that is a form of ethnically cleansing because 20% of Israel is Arab. Muslim. Correct. 20%. And, 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 and people don't know, don't know that. And, and I've been to Israel several times. I was there a few months ago, and I saw the protests. Yes. You know, if you don't have to be... Uh, uh, uh. Seems like they realized the Adam there, who's one of the co-hosts, it seemed like he realized the severity was, you know, what they're, what they're dealing with here. Um, what are your thoughts? I mean... You know, they said it, and then it was like, wait a minute, because, you know, uh, Charlie Kirk said, I have to be really careful how I say this. Ethnic cleansing, yeah, I'm going to say it. He thought about it. That wasn't an accident. Oh, I slipped. He said it explicitly because that's what he wants. And then he thought, oh, wait, maybe, you know, my producer's in my ear telling me maybe I shouldn't say that. So, I mean, that's just, he now, not only is he, is he, does he want to see ethnic cleansing and is he, does he want to see 40 beheaded Israeli babies and millions of killed Palestinians killed? He, uh, uh, he's a liar. He can't, then he can't even be honest about it. I mean, it's just the most, it's if, if any of these people got challenged, you know, if, I mean, can you imagine if I was able to go head to head with them? If I was able to, to debate them, like we're talking right now, live unscripted, I mean, they'd just be humiliated. They would be destroyed and discredited, but they're all frauds, so they won't talk to me. They're all, I mean, 
how do these people sleep at night? I don't I don't get it, Eddie. It's just like they're just they're you know, I guess on a big pile of money. That's all I can all I can say. My 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 Dan, my intention is to you know, because we're we're all human beings and my sincere intention is to try to with these programs to try to awaken any humanity that someone has in their hearts, even be Charlie, whoever the case, you know, to bring out the the good, you know what I mean, to work towards a peace and understanding. And obviously you can't have uh, peace without justice. So when you when you bring to light, you know, uh, we can understand, you know, if we get if we're in a traffic jam, if somebody gives us a ticket unjustly or somebody, you know, imagine someone coming into your house, you know, talk about that for a moment before we go to the next clip. You know, imagine someone from New York comes to your house. We get people get in an uproar. You know, you have uh, incidences like um, a cop may oppress someone. The whole town goes, you know, berserk and whatnot. And then imagine like you're somebody, someone comes in your house, has been your house for generation to come. And now they come in and they have all the soldiers to back them up and they're forcing you out and, you know, children dying. This is something that's not happening on a regular basis, you know, uh, and, 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 no media coverage on this. This is not talked about. And then the people, when they're challenged, I don't know if you saw that. I don't know if you posted that. The person that, when when the person, the, per, the Zionist is challenged on some of these things, it's like no one really challenges it, ask them to condemn. But then when there, I, there was a clip of Sky News when the person was, I don't know if you saw that one. The yeah, yeah. Or something. And what about those Palestinians in hospital who uh, are on life support and babies and incubators whose uh, life support and incubator will have to be turned off because the Israelis have cut the power to Gaza. Are you seriously keep on asking me about Palestinian civilians? What's, what's wrong with you? Have you not seen what happened? We're fighting Nazis. Talk to us for a moment about paint that picture so people can really understand. On one side, is it true? I spoke to uh, many people who are also there. I don't know if you heard of uh, Miko Pillard. Have yep. you ever met him? I know Miko, yes. Yes, uh, he's also an Israeli Jew. His fa his father was one of the original, or his grandfather, a signer of, signers of the uh, Declaration of Independence. I really recommend people to look into his work. And and many people talk about it. You can, you can talk about it because you firsthand lived there. On one side of the fence, you have clean running water. The other side's if you have dirty water, electricity, food, let's talk about that, you know, and then also the, the settlers, you know, the legal UN has constituted this, this is a breaking of international law, uh, help people understand this. So it's, this can, this can uh, really hit home and people can put themselves in that situation, put yourselves in this, in this picture that you're about to, um, the reality of this paint. Well, I mean, the Gaza Strip is, one of the most densely populated places in the world. It's about 2.5 million people now. I mean, when I was there, I think it was, it had just hit 2 million people. So the population continues to grow massively. Um, and so again, it's mostly children. It's less, it's smaller than the size of Manhattan, for example. There is essentially no open space. So it's all buildings, it's all built up. Um, and about, I think 20% of that land even, is a uh, no-go zone. So if you get within, you know, hundreds of meters of the Israeli uh, controlled fence, they'll shoot you. A sniper will shoot you, as I explained, or a remote control uh, uh, um, machine gun will shoot you. You have constant drones humming above your head, which kind of sounds like a, a symphony of lawnmowers, just constantly wow. reminding you that at any point, someone sitting in a military base 50 miles away, looking at you from above can, with the flip of a switch, turn your life off, kill you or your family or anyone else. Um, so the the stress, the dehumanization, I mean, it is a concentration camp. There's no other way to describe it. Um, the Israeli military actually calculated the amount of calories that each Gazan is allowed to consume in a day. And so the idea is to keep this could be verified. Are, are you serious? What? They calculated the, the amount of calories that what? Yes, 100%. That's absolutely true. It's widely reported. Um, um, yes, they, they, they calculated that. So in order to keep people malnourished, but not quite kill them, the whole idea is to keep the place on life support because it has served as a warehouse for Palestinians in order to have this Jewish demographic majority that is artificially engineered in Israel. So, you know, people, uh, so like American Jews 
and Zionists can go and enjoy their lunch in Tel Aviv or go to Jerusalem or wherever and not see very many Palestinians, you have to keep them in a cage. And so that's what that's what Gaza really is. And it's only now that they've shaken their cage, every time they shake their cage, then the Israelis come in and you know, try to pound them into submission. But um, like any patriot, anyone who values freedom and liberty knows that will never happen. People would rather die fighting for their freedom than than to live on their on their knees. And so, you know, that says nothing, of course, on the on for for the children who never make any decision to resist or not. Um, there's a few hours of electricity per day. Uh, Israel has repeatedly bombed the um, power plant, the sewage facilities. So sewage flows openly into the street and into the into the ocean. Uh, sorry, into the Mediterranean Sea. So even if you want to go into the sea and go for a swim, the only way Gazans have to relax and um, and to maybe disconnect a little bit, uh, you're, there's a good chance you'll be swimming in fresh sewage. Um, you have uh, water. There is uh, no clean water um, from the tap and the shower or the sink. So you get uh, seawater. Um, so, you know, every time you take a shower, you have that salt you have that salt on you the only way you get clean water uh for drinking is through delivery um which is a very profitable enterprise for israeli businesses that's been that's another key part of it is the the complete destruction of um the palestinian economy to create a, a dependence economy for israel to exploit so um in every way it is a concentration camp um i would say a vastly more technologically sophisticated concentration camp than we've ever seen. And what I mean by a concentration camp is it concentrates the population. Um, so the Nazi concentration camps were not the only ones in history. There have been uh, that that has been used in, in various contexts. In Vietnam, the United States used concentration camps, for example. Um, but Israeli concentration camps, that's what the Gaza Strip is. And so um, now because of this Hamas operation to attack those settlements and to take Israeli hostages in order to use them to negotiate for their prisoners, which is the idea of taking hostages, uh, the Israelis have decided now it's time to turn the uh, concentration camp into a extermination camp. We're going to exterminate, we're going to ethnically cleanse it and exterminate anyone who stays in here and probably people who are on their, well, they've actually, they gave the orders for the northern roughly third of Gaza for all of the residents to move south, which is a physically impossible task. You're talking about more than 1 million people going through a tiny area. Um, it, it's it's completely impossible. And now they're going to start bombing is what they said. We, we're giving you several hours and we're going to start massively bombing that area. And then as people are moving south, as they heeded those orders, they started bombing them. So it's psychological mm -hmm. warfare um, to just they want to kill as many civilians as possible. And at the same time, you're seeing um, figures like Simcha Rothman, the uh, a member of, of Israel's Israel's parliament, saying uh, our goal is for a Jewish child to be able to walk through Gaza unharmed. So that's the same thing Charlie Kirk is calling for an ethnic cleansing. They want to remove every single last Palestinian from the Gaza Strip, just as they attempted to do in 1947, 1948, and achieved largely, um, and, and they've tried to do throughout the rest of the land. So they want to they want to send them into the Egyptian Sinai, um, and have them permanently live in tent camps, as the um, Israeli member of Parliament Betzalel Smotrich said. And so you know, I mean, whether you want to call that genocide, I don't know. I'm not a legal expert, but it's certainly these Israeli officials have expressed intent to genocide and without a doubt have committed crimes against humanity. And that's what we're witnessing right now. That's what the Gaza Strip has become in the last four days. Is that why it's really important for them, people like Ben Shapiro and the like, to push out much of this fake news, these hoaxes that are out there? For instance, when he was asked, he was pushed to produce evidence he put out he put out a tweet that had a burned what seemed to be a burned baby and then he got tagged what is it community noted that it was an ai image yeah it's even it's even worse than that that image came out from the israeli prime minister's office the, the official um 
the official Twitter account of Benjamin Netanyahu, they they put out three images saying that this is proof of 40 beheaded Israeli babies and, and burned, it, beheaded and burned Israeli babies. Now, one of those images, this is the same one that Ben Shapiro promoted as proof of this. Um, I mean, on its face, that's not proof, okay? One of the images, for example, there's, there's, there's no, you can't tell that anything has been beheaded. I mean, and, and it's, it's so, it's so grim to be discussing these details that that's what they it force is, us yeah. to do to talk about this. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, without even, without d d going into the whole, uh, me debunking the whole thing, one of these images, yes, is apparently AI generated. So these, so, <laughs> I mean, it's just unbelievably cynical. It's beyond anything I could ever comprehend that they're using a fake image, apparently, I mean, I can't say this is 100%, but they are at least using images that don't prove what they're saying and uh, um, and possibly are created, one of them created with artificial intelligence to justify the ethnic cleansing of Palestine. That's, that's what's happening. Uh, this has happened in the past for people who remember the incubator babies with Iraq, so people can get home. These things happen. This is, this is part of getting, dehumanizing, the the other side that you want to exterminate and because the american public uh and people around the world they're not going to support you hopefully if they if their hearts are open if they have any humanity in them they're not going to want to send their money what is it like three over three billion dollars uh to that's sent yearly annually so this is uh, it's very important that people understand this uh to get the people support they have to program them and they have to make people look like animals so they push what you brought up earlier this whole 40 babies and all, all of this uh, fake news uh, because nobody wants to see babies killed. But uh, it's ironic now on the other side, now you're seeing it in front of you happening that you're seeing. Uh, you have a friend of yours, uh, actually. I was going to find the uh, clip, but you have a friend of yours who's in Gaza and he was taking on Instagram. People can go. We'll try to get this, this uh, up that people can see. And in real time, he's showing... Uh, if you can help me with, with sure. the, the, na the name. What's his name? Motaz Azaiza. Yes, yes, yes. That's that's the one. And he's actually in real time. He's showing you're seeing actually baby parts. You're seeing like you, you saw those. Uh, you obviously saw what he's uh, posting on his uh, on his Instagram. It's very sad. It's it's just uh, out of this world. I cannot believe in real time. This is unfolding. Motaz is a uh, portrait photographer. That's what mm -hmm. he's, he's one of the sweetest, most childlike people I've ever known in my life. Um, that's what he wants to do is be a portrait photographer. And because of the circumstances that he that he was born into, because of Zionism, he's forced to be a war correspondent or a war hmm. Instagrammer documenting the ethnic cleansing going on around him of his people. And yesterday, uh, and he's been braving the bombardment going outside and going to the the scenes of fresh airstrikes and watching the most horrible things that we could imagine that, you know, I, God forbid anyone else has to ever see in their life. And yesterday he went to his, uh, an, an, a home that had been um, struck in his neighborhood, his home neighborhood, and it turned out to be his family, his father's side of the family, 15, at least 15 people who were killed. And so, and he documented it. And um, I mean, it's just beyond you know, anything I can imagine when we, you know, is Israel's lying about 40 Israel and Ben Shapiro and Charlie Kirk, all these guys, all the mainstream media are lying about 40 beheaded Israeli babies. Meanwhile, they're bombing people to where they're just, it's just body parts. You look at the body bags in my, you know, I have it on my Twitter. I, I showed his Motaz's videos that are on his Instagram. It's body bags listed with parts of this person and parts of that person. And there's a question mark, which, which body part, is who who is who's this body part belong to and so you know that stuff will never be talked about in mainstream media um or or by any of these these professional liars calling for ethnic cleansing so i mean it's just you know it's it's just beyond words beyond comprehension um what is what is happening and i very much fear for motaz's life um you know i constantly checking his Instagram and WhatsApp to see if he's logged in. And I actually, this is it here, right? This is him right here. That's him. Yep. You can follow him on Instagram, Motaz underscore Azaiza. Um, mm -hmm. 
you have to follow him in order to uh, to to be able to see him. Instagram restricted his feed to people only who follow him, so they're censoring mm-hmm. him too, soft censoring. But mm-hmm. I mean, you know, at any moment he could just be killed. And uh, I I've been texting him just messages of support, and I called him yesterday afternoon here in in Washington D.C. where I am. It's probably. 11 o'clock midnight in Gaza. And he answered. I mean, he's just such a kind soul. And he's he's completely exhausted emotionally and physically and in every way. And he answered and we talked for a few minutes. And I just tried to cheer him up and tell him how important what he's doing is. And, and um, yeah, sorry, <laughs> you know, it's, it's emotional for me. And just tell him, uh, you know, how much I support him. And I'm thinking of him. And and like we even managed to share a laugh so i mean it's just uh just beyond comprehension it's just it's crimes against humanity that's that's all i can say i you know some somebody has to intervene to stop this you know we we hear about the us we hear about responsibility to protect that was the justification for bombing libya for 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 you know we we we're protecting people in syria and ukraine all these places meanwhile we are underwriting the ethnic cleansing of Palestine at this very moment. And, uh, you know, the State Department even circulated memos among its staff today. This was reported by the Huffington Post saying, make sure you don't do don't do anything like calling for a ceasefire or de-escalation or negotiations. Those words are all banned in the State Department. So, I mean, <laughs> they're banned in the State Department. What can Americans do now? What can Americans, you know, people who are watching this, you know, people like uh, uh, out there who are actually, um, you know, people like uh, Jackson Hickley. I don't know who this person is, but I'm just seeing that he's awoke to some of the things that are going on and, and yourself and others. Uh, what can what can people do who they don't um, they don't approve of this? It's the first time, you know, they've been they've been watching the mainstream media. Now they got outside their box. They're watching some independent news. They're getting a whole different picture because I don't think anybody can really, you know, look into this. You've had some of the, um, some of the social, the the celebrities like the Justin Beavers, LeBron James, right? Probably given a script by their managers, pushing the stuff exactly. out. Have you seen some of these, right? But I don't think if they if they did what you did, if they did what some of these others did, and they really took a how, how can how can a person took a deeper dive? I guess that's my question to to kind of get beyond the the mainstream headline approach because they know most people don't go deeper they just read the headlines so that's why they put all this fake news out there and then that's what's stuck in the head job is done finish but the but people who are watching us now and i and i i really um i call upon you know someone um like patrick ben david who has a big following he's talking about this invite dan on invite people who We'll give you the other side and let people judge from there. Let, let's be fair. Let's have the debate. Let's go ahead and talk about it, you know, from both sides. Um, so what, what advice would you have for your average person, average American uh, person who just has very little uh, knowledge on this? How can they get more informed? Yeah, I mean, first thing I would say is stop watching television because it's all the same exact messaging. It's all controlled. Um, it's all deceptions. And it's very hard to know what's true and what's not if you're not well versed and you're not, you know, following it in a in to the level of kind of granular detail. Um, I mean, if you want to get a sense of what Gaza is really like, you can watch my documentary that I made. With, what's that called? What's that called again? It's called Killing Gaza. Okay, you people can, can watch that. KillingGaza.com. I mean, if you you know, this, like I said, it's five five dollars to buy it on there, or three dollars to rent it. That will help me with my work, um, which is sorely needed. Or um, you can watch it for free. You can w- go to YouTube. If you don't have, you know, five bucks to spare right now, no problem. Go watch it on YouTube for free um, or on Vimeo. It's also on Vimeo for free. We made it free a couple of years ago. I made that with Max Blumenthal, the, the journalist. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, so, you know, that'll give you a sense of what Gaza is like. I also did a film for Mint Press News on Gaza that Motaz Azaiza filmed. It's called Gaza Fights Back. Um, you can find that on, on, uh, it's on my Twitter. It's also, uh, on mint press News's YouTube channel. If you look up mint press news, Gaza fights back, you can see it there. Um, you know, if anyone can't find it, just tweet at me, I'll, I'll, I'll send it out. I'll, um, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll retweet it. Even I put it up yesterday. Um, you know, but you can watch, go on social media, go on Twitter, 
Follow what Motaz is doing. Look at what people who are actually showing you what's going on is doing, not people on television who are explaining their analysis or their opinion or, you know, I mean, not that it's bad to, I mean, I'm obviously giving you my opinion and my analysis, but I, you know, I'm someone who's actually been there, um, not on the corporate media. They're all, they're all well-paid liars. That's their job. And that, that job has now turned into what Charlie Kirk is doing, inciting ethnic cleansing and lying about beheaded babies and, and this kind of thing. So, um, you know, that's, it's, it's, it's not a very complex issue. It's, you know, what, what American patriots who believe in, in freedom and liberty, like I said, someone was in, encroaching on your land. Well, I mean, a lot of people, you know, believe in the second, second amendment. And that's what many people in Gaza feel too, that they support the resistance um, because they have no other choice. It's a battle for their, it's, it's, it's either it's live, you know, on their knees or, or, uh, or die, you know, it's basically the choices they're given now. It's kind of like, um, what analogy can you give? Uh, or have you given, like if somebody comes into your house and now is, um, is trying to force you out, forcing you out at gunpoint, um, killing your family members, uh, and even before that, you go deeper, you, you know, these are people who actually live together in peace and harmony, Jews, Christians, and Muslims before this whole Zionist movement came in. So now, uh, now you want to put them on even playing field. Now, now you end up, someone goes and, and, uh, and, and fights back against the, the person who's in the house attacking, attacking the, uh, the family. And now they're caught. Now the victim is being made, uh, and this equal playing ground as the aggressor, as the criminal. That, that's that's not uh, that's how they're trying to make it seem like. Uh, but it's it's clear as day if you look at, into this. Uh, people, when you just a couple more questions when you when you look at um, this term apartheid, uh, people like Nelson Mandela have called it this. Uh, Jimmy Carter, the U.S. president. And human rights, is, isn't it true that human rights organizations also, uh, Israeli human rights organizations have also called this an apartheid state? Can you can you talk about this for, for a moment? Yeah, I mean, the apartheid label is not even controversial at this point. Um, it's long been an apartheid state, just two, two legal systems. Even within so-called democratic Israel, it's an apartheid state. You have uh, many discriminatory laws that are specifically against Arab citizens, Palestinian citizens of Israel, let alone the various kind of um, levels of citizenship or non-citizenship or residency for Palestinians in Jerusalem and the West Bank and Gaza. I mean, it is by definition an apartheid regime. That's just a it's almost like a bland statement now. Um, but as you mentioned, the Israeli NGO Beit uh, has long called it an apartheid state. So, um, I mean, it, what, what South African apartheid was pales in comparison to what the Israeli project is, the Zionist project, which, you know, the, the, the South Africans were not using F-16s to bomb entire neighborhoods, to wipe out entire neighborhoods. They weren't, you know, firing artillery blindly into densely populated neighborhoods of children, into shanty towns. That's what Gaza that's what Gaza is, where, you know, now they want to ethnically cleanse an entire third of it and bomb the people as they're fleeing. I mean, this is a this is another level. This is what Charlie Kirk demanded, ethnic cleansing. Uh, so and that's what Palestinians have suffered for years and years and years since, you know, their grandfathers or the youngest ones, even their great grandparents, you know, and there are very few survivors left of the Nakba, the catastrophe of 1947, 1948, that just, you know, on the ruins of Palestine, where the state of Israel was established, um, those, you know, that's, that's what has gone on every day. So today is another Nakba. And that's, that's what's happening. So, I, you know, I'm just praying, hoping that um, some force will intervene to stop Israel, whether through diplomatic or military means, they have to be stopped. Mm -hmm. God bless you. Thank you very much. Uh, where can people go ahead and if they want to follow you and connect with you, look more into your documentary, where can they go? Um, you can, um, my, my, uh, work is all on, on my Twitter 
at Dan Cohen 3000. You can follow me there. You can message me. Um, you can, you can reach out to me and very always happy to hear from, from people who are interested in my work. Um, the documentary killing Gaza, <clears throat> excuse me, is at killing Um, the, then, um, I'm actually have another documentary project that is extremely urgent. I'm trying to finish in the next, as soon as possible, uh, regarding, um, the situation in Palestine, specifically about Al-Aqsa, the Al-Aqsa compound. And so if any, it's, you know, if anyone wants to defend Al-Aqsa, which is very much under threat at this moment, because of course, this is not going to stay in the Gaza Strip. These, uh, you know, hardcore, these, these fanatical Zionist forces would love nothing more than to destroy Al-Aqsa. Um, and they see it as a big yellow button to press to launch the, the kind of war that they actually want. Um, then, you know, please consider, uh, on, on my, on my tweet, my first tweet, my pin tweet, I have a link to go buy me a coffee. I also have Patreon. I also have Substack. You can donate, um, anywhere there to, to support my project that I'm this documentary that is essential that I'm trying to get out and I'll be able to announce more about it and release a trailer very soon. I just can't do it quite yet. Um, so thank you so much for, for having me and I appreciate, you know, your, your platform and your integrity and, uh, thank you. And thank you. Free Palestine. Thank you very much. May um, God bless you. And we call upon the uh, Piers Morgans and uh, Patrick Ben Davis and others. You're ready for a debate. You're ready for a discussion on the on the issue. If they invite, you're ready to go. Let's get this, uh, send this out, retweet this out, pass this video on to, to them and their channels. And uh, let's demand that what the viewers want to see so they can make an informed, a properly informed uh, decision. You're down for that, huh? 100%. Anytime. Um, you know, I don't even, I don't need to be disrespectful or call anybody names i'll just calmly debunk um you know the 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 claims and the lies and and you know we'll talk about what's true and what's real and how we're actually going to protect human life not only palestinians but israelis too let's all, all human life yes exactly thank you very much thank you Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh brothers and sisters this is your brother Hassan Chibli and I'm so excited so grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be standing right here at the Dean Center that is being established in Tampa by brother Eddie from the Dean Show we are so excited that he's chosen Tampa to be this hub and center for dawah not just locally alhamdulillah where we can host seminars programs dawah activities there's enough space for a school gymnasium uh, musalla and a studio that can inshallah reach people globally to share the beauty of Islam. We're so excited to have this established here locally in Tampa and I want to encourage you all do what you can to help complete this project and make it a reality and I invite you all to join me in supporting the center. May Allah make it a sadaqah jariya for all of us to share the beauty of the deen with all humanity. Ameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I cannot leave without giving you a gift. If you're not yet Muslim and you're tuning in to see what these Muslims are talking about and you like a free copy of the Quran, go ahead and visit thedeanshow.com. We'll take care of the postage and everything and get it delivered to you. And if you still have some questions about Islam, call us at 1-800-662-4752. We'll see you next time. Until then, peace be with you. Assalamu